Hi, and welcome to the second Google Hangout with Women Who Innovate. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the innovation mission and creativity and how the two play, create tension, and actually ultimately create great relationships with clients. I'm going to throw the ball to one of my cohorts, my partners in crime, Renee Hopkins. Take it away. Thank you, Leah. Um, I'd like to introduce our guest tonight. Um, she is one of the women who innovate, but she is also an expert on creativity, which is our topic. Catherine Rudica. And Catherine, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, hi, Renee and Leah and Wanda. Um, I'm an innovation consultant, and I also am an artist in different disciplines and an author, a composer, visual and digital artist. So I use some of my background in arts as well as other areas in, in what I do in business. That sounds great. Um, and you are perfectly um, situated to answer this very broad question. Um, what is creativity? How would you define it? You know, that's something that people always talk about. What is creativity? Um, the probably the most common definition is making something original by synthesizing other patterns or of information or things that we already have and bringing something new into creation. I, I think it can be different things, and it and people tend to think of creativity as only being artistic creativity. I remember I was given a career test probably about 20 years ago. <laughs> and I got, they had two categories of creativity. I don't know if this test is still given or not, but um, I was surprised. I thought, well, what's up with that? Two categories of creativity. And one was called artistic creativity, and I scored pretty high in that, and that didn't surprise me. But then they had this other one, conceptual creativity, and I thought, aha, I got a high score in that. That was very surprising. And it turns out now I use that skill all the time because it involves designing things, conceiving of patterns and ideas and putting them together. So if you're designing any kind of program, like an innovation program, you're using conceptual creativity. That sounds really interesting. I wonder if that's the same thing as what it, uh, one job I had where we were working as uh, consultants doing ideation um, with, with uh, consumers. We were testing people for what we called um, idea creativity or the ability to have a lot of ideas and resist closure on them. I wonder if that's the same thing as the conceptual. That's just that's interesting. So um, you were talking about um, innovation programs and the creativity mission. Can you say more about that? Why is it important? Well, I think lately I've seen a lot of blog posts and articles somehow separating creativity from innovation. Yep. And I don't think that's right. I think that any human endeavor actually involves creativity. And certainly innovation involves creating something new for a business or an organization and adding financial value to it, economic value. So you don't have to have one without the other. They're both integrated. And I don't think creativity is just thinking of ideas. It goes all the way through the process of innovation, including the implementation of it. So one of the things I think about creativity is that it's solving problems. You're always solving a problem. And in business, you just have a goal that, you know, I mean, artists have goals too, but in business, you definitely have to have goals because you're creating value, you're involving customers. So, um, you know, it's still creativity. It's just solving problems every step of the way in the whole process. Catherine, I have a quick question for you. And I guess this is actually for Wanda as, as well. Can you identify Wanda children in school who are expressly creative? That that someday you know they're going to be fantastic business people. And for you, Catherine, when does creativity start? Um, I think that it might be better for Catherine to go first. Um, so <laughs> it might be easier for me to answer her question. Um, creativity. Uh, you know, to Catherine's point, I think that there's different kinds of creativity, and we have such a tendency to assume that it's about the arts only, and it that just silos creativity versus 
it really is about problem solving. Even if you're an artist, you're solving problems in how you're creating what your your particular artwork is, whatever, whether that's a painting or weaving or whatever. So the answer to your question, Leah, would be that yes, I think you can tap into that as an educator. Um, thinking back to how our gardeners multiple intelligence theory about how kids all are wired uniquely to learn in a multiple in multiple ways. So depending on the child, one child might be more analytical. It doesn't mean that he's less creative than the child who is more artistic. What do you do to to foster creativity in kids within the school system or within education? I think it goes back to what Catherine was saying. You're, you're teaching 21st century skills or problem solving skills. So um, it depends on what methodology you're using in your school. But for example, design thinking, which is what a lot of schools use, or the design thinking process of some kind, problem-based learning, project-based learning, place-based learning, all those things um, can be tools and strategies where you teach children how to problem solve um, through an ideation process where they're actually testing theories and um, or re revising you know, their research in a, in a paperwork if they're writing some kind of a thesis or a paper paragraph essay depending on the age. Um, and Catherine, how, how did, you've got to have experience teaching uh, not just probably young people but also adults. How do you teach creativity? Um, I personally think people are creative uh, when they're babies or when they're little kids. You can see it in the way that children play and I think that's the thing we have to recognize that creativity in very young children and babies is about playing and if you watch them play they're actually usually solving a problem you know, they might be, they may have a smile on their face, they might be laughing, which by the way would be a good way to approach solving problems when we're older too. Um, <laughs> you know, we take it so seriously, but really play. You see children improvising, which is uh, coming up with something on the fly, you know, on the spot. And, and so I think that we're born creative. I think that, um, you know, maybe some people genetically get a little more creativity than others or in certain areas, but I, I do think we don't know the we don't know the line there yet, but I think that um, certainly most people, if not all, are born creative and it depends on how we're raised. We certainly can do a lot more in schools to preserve the creativity that we're born with and to bring it out, to teach people, you know, to guide their talents in different areas. Well, so let's assume that your let's assume that the, your clients, and I'm guessing this is probably true, and not just an assumption, have somehow lost their creative way by the time they got to work. <laughs> so, so you you are working on you do a lot of um, creativity training and helping clients decide, you know, how to. Um, you know, bring the creativity mission into their uh, innovation programs to make them more effective. So, so you know, fast forward past the creative child to the relatively uncreative adult. <laughs> what do you do to, to help those organizations? <laughs> well, usually I, I manage an entire innovation process or part of it. And so the first step is we have to find out what the goals are of the organization or if there's already a team that's going to do the innovation or we have to put one together, whether we're going to involve uh, organizations or people outside of the company or the organization. So I have to do a lot of assessment at the beginning and find out what their overall goals are on a business level. Um, you know, I wish that I could go around the world and just have carte blanche to help everybody become more creative, but that's not usually what happens in the business setting. So, you know, I wish nobody, you could too. Nobody has paid me yet enough to do that. But anyway, um, we we uh, what we need to do is figure out what all the steps will be. And we can adjust those as we need to, but we figure out what the steps are to the goal and what the objectives are, the business objectives. Or sometimes I work with nonprofits or healthcare or government projects. You know, there are different kinds of goals. And then we work backwards. And so then we find out 
who in the company or organization will be involved in carrying this out. And then I look at those people, and you know, there are different. I, there are a lot of tools and assessment tools you can use. I have some proprietary tools I use too, and I try to make it as fun and as non-threatening as possible with those people. So that the first step is developing relationships so people basically trust you. And I, I can observe how much they trust each other if that trusts you. Um, I'm also an executive coach, so sometimes I also do coaching and try to help them improve the culture first for creativity if that's necessary. Then, you know, we might get into anything from lateral thinking, which is de bono technique. I've used like Disney storytelling techniques. I've created some of my own techniques using arts. Um, by arts, that doesn't mean anybody has to know how to do something. Um, I have uh, used some instruments, for example, that I've used for teamwork to keep to get people to learn how to jam. And there are special instruments where you they, they have kind of an open scale, so you can actually play them and not know how to play them, <laughs> you know, or, or you can involve percussion. <laughs> You can do visual art techniques where nobody really has to know how to draw or paint. You know, I've used techniques using photographs, and everybody can take pictures. You know, so I've, I've sent, sent people out into the field with a specific assignment that relates to their business goal and had them take pictures, and then we create photo collages. And what's interesting about that is insight. What I want is people to make an emotional connection to their creativity. And, and get in touch with having insights. And that's really where you get more interesting ideas. They're Catherine? deeper. No, yes. I'm They're sorry, deeper ideas than you would get, you know, just if you did it off the top of your head. Well, I was just, as, you're, as you were talking, um, from the business perspective, I'm thinking from the lens of a CEO, how, how is creativity valued? Is it on a scale from one to ten from corporate clients and then compare it to a nonprofit? I mean, how, how much is it valued? I think actually that scale would be different from organization to organization and even mm -hmm. in different departments. And so often what you run into is you're, you're working with people from different departments. And uh, that's why often oh, I, I'm involved in putting a team together. And if you have open innovation, of course, you have different organizations involved in it, and they may have different cultures. So often I end up doing some culture work with them before really taking them through the entire innovation process. You know, and there's a time limit on all of this. We don't have forever to do this. So we really have to hone in and pinpoint and tailor design each part of the process to that particular client or that team. And that's really crucial. So I've, I've been given a lot of uh, praise for my ability to do that, to zero in on what people really need, and then to be very resourceful and picking the right tools and the right people to work with them. So often I've put together a small team and brought in other consultants to, who specialize in different tools you know, to work with them. I, I think I have a good overall sense of tools and then specific ones that I like to do the best. So sometimes it oh, looks like we looks like we lost. Looks I, was like about, we lost I was about to ask her why why isn't a culture of creativity and a culture of innovation so important for a company to actually do innovation? So I'll just toss that out to the two of you and see, you know, what do you think about that? I mean, why does why does everybody talk about culture so much? Why what do you need why do you need that type of culture in order to innovate? You know, I, while she was talking and this may play into your question. It's interesting because there's a study out that says that 85% of workers in no matter what sector they're in believe that creativity is important for their work, but only 35% feel comfortable expressing creativity at work. And I think that that plays into the culture. So it's creating, to what Catherine was saying, I think the climate of trust, um, the ability to feel safe in risk. You know, the most famous example of that probably is Google's 20% rule. But not every company or nonprofit or 
you know, hospital, school is in a situation where they can divide their time up like that. But I, I found that it was a really interesting study to think through that so many people overwhelmingly feel like that creativity is important, especially in innovation. But exactly. But less than 40%, like something like 32%, the exact number of these me, let me look, 32%. Don't feel comfortable thinking creatively in their career or about their career, and 78% wish they had more creativity. They had more creative ability. I think that to me is is, is astounding. I mean, the, those statistics are overwhelming. It's hard. Um, I know too when I do consulting and I walk in, and I'm the most creative person in the world in that group. And when I look at all the four of us, I'm the least creative out of the four of us. <laughs> so when I, I don't walk believe in, that. I just don't believe that at all. Oh no, that. it's 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 true. <laughs> no, <that's funny. laughs> well, see, I wonder. So I'm I keep coming back to this point, and that is, you know, I believe this myself, but but you know, I don't hear people talking a lot about why it's important for people to be creative, to, to have those skills in order to, to, to solve the problems that they face in their jobs and to you know, be able to, to carry out innovation missions and innovation projects. Because I think fundamentally in the innovation process, if unless you have um, creative people on a team, you're going to revert back to what it is you know. You're, you're going to be very incremental. Um, you're going to uh, go fall into research. But innovation, you just never quite get there. So right. I think that for real innovation to happen, you've got to tap in to, to Wanda said, that, that, that ability to, to cross that barrier of thinking out of the box and not being afraid to do that. And it goes back to culture. I, I agree. And I think that, I think we're seeing a shift. You know, we have um, a whole new generation of people entering the workplace. You know, so the so-called millennial and, the, and the, the kids that are graduating after them that think differently. And mm -hmm. they don't, they enjoy a more, a more of a flat leadership style. They want to have a say in how an organization develops. They're much more interested in entrepreneurship and startups. So the paradigm shift of kind of a top-down hierarchy, I think we're starting to see that happen. And I think we're going to see more and more people. That research is going to bear out that not only do people feel uncomfortable, but they're actually going to desire that training to have more, you know, more creative training of what does that really look like and how do I, you know, to Catherine's point, she was talking about different strategies and tools like improv um, is a great tool to use in, a, in any kind of training, whether it's with students or with someone from corporate world. Um, just getting people to think outside of the box a little bit. Yeah, when it, when it was harder. I just want to say that think outside of the box is my least favorite term, and we can address right. that later. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Can we come up with a different term that will make you feel more comfortable? I, is there what I wanted to say was that... Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Was that um, you have to go deeper with the ideas if you want to get to something really disruptive or new or something that hasn't existed before. And to go deeper, you have to get people emotionally involved. You have yeah. to get them to have insights that are deeper than yeah. usual. And that's what these techniques are really useful for. Um, I, I heard Wanda mention improv. You know, there's so many different techniques, I can't even mention them all here. And then, of course, when you get more into implementation, you have to know things like maybe business model canvas or some other ones that have to do with actually implementing the project. But uh, to, to not get the quality of ideas that you might get by skipping over that phase, um, you know, you're just not going to have as exciting of ideas to to go on with. And you know, some companies like Pixar have their own proprietary exercises that they do, and I know some of those. And you know, there are other ones I've developed. And so that's what you need to do. You need to engage the people who are going to be thinking of the ideas. 
And also sometimes we get customer input, and that's a whole other toolbox that you might use. You might be using different software platforms as well. So I wanted to say all that because I think that's what people don't realize always is what level of ideas do you want to get? How engaged do you want your employees to be in this process? Do you want them to have fun and come up with something really new? And, and that's why you need to go and you need to bring in the tools that are right for the stage of the project that you're at. I think that's so key. Is it just what you mentioned. It's about the level of ideas and getting lots of ideas because some of those ideas aren't even ideas yet. They're idea fragments. Yeah. And, and, and then you can start putting that all together. Well, I think you have to vet those ideas. So you have to have a process for collecting them and then figuring out which are the best ones to move forward with. So, so I think we're about out of time, but I wanted, well, there was one question that we, we sort of, you know, alluded to, but didn't really dive deeply into, and we don't have to dive super deeply into it now, but it would be really fun if everybody here, you know, mentioned what is their, if, of all the things that need to go in an innovation toolbox, what is your favorite tool, the one you would take to your innovation desert island? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. So you should start, Renee. What's your what is your desert island tool? <laughs> well, I would say, I think my desert island tool is improv. I know you were the one who brought it up, but I just feel like the the basic the, the, the framework that it gives you and the really basic rule of, you know, you must you can't say no, you must say yes and you can't you know, refuse. You can't walk away from the scene. You know, it just sort of demands that you, you know, get in there basically without any knowledge of what's going on uh, or very little because you're creating it. I just think it breeds uh, creativity just, and just uh, you know, by itself. So that's my Desert Island innovation tool. <laughs> yeah, I could see you. And you, you'd need a guitar. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. there would be music involved for sure. Right. Yeah. Well, what's yours, Wanda? I think mine is probably um, visual thinking. So yeah, I I think in pictures, and I've really gotten into the uh, to doodling and to when I take notes and try to put a visual behind the note, and it's really changed how I operate as a, just myself. And I find it so incredibly powerful that. I, I now walk around like it's a joke at work because I have to have like I'm, I start talking and I'll get like tongue tied because I'm trying to get a thought out and then somebody will put a marker in my hand and I'm at the whiteboard and I can talk again. So I think that if I had if I had you know crayons paper and um, I'd be good to go. Yeah, that's good. I can see. Well, I'll go next, and then and since we started with Catherine, Catherine can end. Um, to me, anything that is with a group activity, that um, whether it be, um, I know one thing we did with with Drew when we were at Ignite, is he gave us all aluminum foil, this group, and who could make the biggest tower, and then put this bag of cookies on top of it and have it have it stay mm -hmm. and it was fun it was laughter and people just were, were and, and my group won of course <laughs> and, and my husband's group did not they lost can you they say you're literal not. well but I was with a group so anything <laughs> that's with like group activity and and I can you know and inspire other people to to, to do stuff I, I would have that'd be my toolkit I'd have to have other people on the island with me <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Catherine, what about you? Well, well, I'd probably have to lug my whole suitcase of tools with me, of course. But um, <laughs> an open mind. I would take an open mind because you shouldn't yeah. make any assumptions. Mm -hmm. And if Why? you're stuck on an island just to survive, you're going to have to have an open mind, right? Right. And my storytelling capability in any medium, because what would you do there? You'd have to tell yourself stories as right. well as maybe the birds or the trees or... Uh, anybody you could talk to at that point. That's right. That's good. Well, okay, so I think we're, we're just about ready to conclude for tonight. Be looking for us next month, and who knows what topic we're going to have, but I will tell you one thing. Um, it, it, it is going to be interesting because all of us uh, come from the innovation world, and all of us love to see an idea come to fruition, with, uh, which, which changes the way we do stuff. So 
Have a good evening and thanks for joining us.